In today's video I'd like to talk about multiple myeloma and provide a short introduction to this condition. Uh, this video will be mainly aimed at patients to help them understand their condition better and also for their loved ones of course who may want to know a little bit more. But medical students and doctors that don't see patients with myeloma every day hopefully will find this useful as well. So to understand myeloma, we have to go back to basics again and remind ourselves that the bone marrow is the factory of blood and myeloma is a cancer of the bone marrow. But when we think of blood, there's a lot of different elements to blood. And I want to summarize that quickly again for a more detailed video you can look at the video titled Stem Cell Basics, How Blood is Made, also on my channel. But let's start from scratch. So inside the marrow, which as I say is a factory of blood, there are these cells that we call stem cells. And stem cells are the parent cells from which a range of other cells are made. There are so-called white cells, that stem from these stem cells. There are red blood cells and there are platelets. Now these are the main large categories and there are many smaller categories as well. But in summary, the white blood cells are there to fight infection, the red blood cells to carry oxygen and the platelets to prevent bleeding. Now if we look at the white cell category in more detail, there are many different subtypes of white blood cell and I'm not going to name all of them here. But there's one that's important and that is a cell called a plasma cell. Now plasma cells are cells that all of us have and that have the job to produce antibodies. Now, antibodies are special proteins that help us to fight infections. In myeloma, however, it is the plasma cells that become cancerous. So we can also say that myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells. And thus, these plasma cells will increase in number. And these abnormal plasma cells can now also produce antibodies. And another name for antibodies are immunoglobulins. And this is important because these immunoglobulins can be measured in the blood and are useful to monitor uh, for any progression of disease and or for any response to therapy. So to go back, all of this production of white, red and platelets happens inside the bone marrow. So these plasma cells that look something like this, there are these oval shaped cells with a nucleus sitting more to the side, a nucleus of course containing the DNA, they will start increasing in the marrow in a patient with myeloma. In normal healthy people, when you do a bone marrow test, you will also find these plasma cells, but they are usually less to or equal than 5%. Whereas in myeloma, they will obviously be increased in number. So from this you can already see that if there's an infiltration of these cancerous plasma cells in the factory, in the bone marrow, that they will start taking up more and more space in the marrow. Now, of course, in real life, they're much smaller than this. This is just an illustration. But as they fill up the factory, the factory cannot work properly. It's almost like a terrorist invasion of the factory. And when that happens, the bone marrow's ability to produce the other normal cells, in other words, all these other white blood cells that I didn't give names now, the other ones here, 
as well as the red blood cells and the platelets can all decrease in number. So let's just put some down arrows here. They can all decrease in number, which may then make you more vulnerable to infection if the white cells are decreased. When the red cells are decreased, you become what we call anemic, so you're more tired. And uh, if the platelets are decreased, um, there's an increased risk for bleeding. In most patients, the red blood cells are the one that are primarily affected. Um, and the, this group then leads to what we call anemia. And that's what causes the fatigue and the tiredness. But you can also see that these plasma cells sit in bone. And in a number of ways, they can cause problems with the bones. So let's just say here that the bones may be affected in a variety of ways, but also because the bones are affected, um, a lot of calcium is sometimes released into the bloodstream from the bones and the calcium levels can increase and that has got its own challenges. If we look at the antibodies, the antibodies or parts of the antibodies, which we will again go into detail in another video, can be deposited in different organs, but especially in the kidneys. And the filtering system of the kidneys may uh, become affected, and this could potentially lead to kidney failure or other kidney problems. Note that it doesn't mean that if you have myeloma, that you have to have all of these problems. You may only have one of them. Only anemia, for instance, or only the bones affected, or only the calcium. Sometimes a combination. So again, in summary, myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells. Plasma cells are found in the bone marrow. When we test the bone marrow, we can see an increase in their number. This will lead to a problem with normal bone marrow production, leading to, amongst others, anemia. But other cell counts can also be affected. The surrounding bone could be affected, which could lead to weakening of the bones or high calcium levels. And then, because of this excess in antibodies, the kidneys and the filtering systems may also be affected. But all of this we can explore further in other videos. I'd like to close this video by saying that a huge amount of progress has been made in the understanding of what myeloma is and how to treat it with many, many new treatments already being developed and a large number on the horizon. I hope to go into more detail about myeloma and perhaps its complications and treatment in other videos. But at this stage, I hope that this provided a basic introduction that you have found useful. If you liked it, please press the like button below. Thank you.